Well, praise the Lord, everybody, and happy new year to you. Um, this is my first time being with you all in the new year, so I just want to wish all of our family and friends happy new year. Um, we made it. We are here. We have crossed over to a new year, even though we know our God is not confined to time. But this is helpful for us to mark the seasons and the time. So we thank God for another year. We thank God for all that God has done for us as a church family. We are entering into, if you haven't heard, our theme for this year is times of refreshing. Um, the exec team and myself, we really were prayerful about what we should do this year, um, knowing that it could be crazy again, as we are seeing that it is. What, what do the people of God need right now? And in our hearts and our minds, we really wanted to focus on times of refreshing, times of healing, times of wellness for the people of God. Can you say amen? So as we enter, we're going to just enter into these. We have so many things we're going to present to you, so much so much programming we want to bring to you that will promote our health, that will promote our wellness, that will promote resting. So we're just really excited to be with you in this new year. So as we turn and pivot to the Word of God, we want to start and open with a word of prayer. Um, we know that that the COVID numbers are uh, surging right now. And we just want to take a moment just to pray. Amen. Um, if you have loved ones, if you yourself are watching and you have been affected by COVID, maybe you are sick right now. Maybe you had a positive diagnosis. Um, whatever the case may be, we want to pray. We want to pray that God will bring peace, comfort, and healing to your situations. Anyone who's dealing with um, um, with uh, people who have passed away or grieving or mourning. We want to lift you up in this moment. So can you just join us in a time of prayer as we lift up our loved ones? And if you feel so moved, why don't you put names of people who you want to pray for in the chat, okay? And so that our community can join and we can pray together. So God, we come before you. God, we just um, thank you for a new year, but God, we also recognize the seriousness of this time. And Lord, we want to lift our friends, our family members, ourselves, our loved ones up to you in this time. God, we declare and we cry out that we need your mercy. God, we are believing that you are a God who heals. You are a God who delivers. You are a God who saves. You are a God who comforts. You comfort, us, you comfort us even in our loss and in our mourning and our grieving. So, God, we just come before you as a community. God, we have nowhere else to turn to but to you. And we say, God, that we need your help. We need your mercy. And, God, we pray that you would use us as a community to bring life, to bring hope, to bring joy, to bring peace on earth. Let your kingdom be done on earth as it is. It is in heaven. God, will you lift up every bowed head and ease every heavy heart. We just want to lay our loved ones before you. All those who are in the chat that have been listed, Lord, will you just bless and touch and heal. And we look forward to hearing testimonies of your greatness. We love you and we thank you. We pray that you will bless the word today. Lord, that it will touch us right where we need to hear. God, we need a word from you. So God, will you bless and touch us and heal us. We give you all the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. And thank God. Amen. Can you just type amen in the, in the chat? Can you just give God just a small moment of praise? Hallelujah. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you reverence, oh God. I am so excited because um, in January we are uh, going to start a series. We have a series going, and the series is very interesting, the title. Um, we are calling this series Rest in Life. 
It's the Rest in Life series, amen? And um, we're just going to dive right into it. And this word is coming from Matthew 11. And Matthew 11, 28 and 29. And we're going to read this from the Amplified Version, okay? It says, Come to me, all who are weary and heavily burdened by religious rituals that provide no peace. And I will give you rest, refreshing your souls with salvation. 29, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Follow me as my disciple, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest, renewal, blessed quietness for your souls. Amen. May God bless the readers, the hearers, and the doers of God's holy word. Yes, we are in a new sermon series, and we are entering into the series at a very unique time in history because I don't know about you, does anybody else feel like we are in the movie Groundhog's Day? I don't know, that might be too old for some of the millennials, but go ahead and get on Netflix or Prime and go and look up Groundhog's Day. It feels like we are in Groundhog's Day movie, but instead of Groundhog's Day, it should be called Groundhog's Year. Like we are in the third iteration of going through this pandemic. And I know, I know, I know we've we've heard all the things, we've said all the things, we're doing all the things. It just feels like we are reliving (laughs) deja vu over and over again. Can I get an amen? I know y'all feeling me and I know we all feel the same way, but I just want to offer to you that in this moment, in this time of history, that we have a choice. Me and you have a choice. We have a choice that we can just be tired and weary and distraught and complaining and just pulling our hair off and buying more tissue than we need to buy. We could be that person or we can experience a promise of rest that God has established for those who are willing to enter in. Amen. God has a promise of rest for his people. And this is a church. This In this church, in our church, we are leaning into refreshing. We are leaning into wellness. We are leaning into healing. This is our goal for this for this year in the midst of another iteration of the pandemic and all the variants that are coming afterwards, right? Um, is anyone familiar with the term RIP? I'm sure we, we all know RIP. RIP is the acronym for rest in peace. And it's something that usually we say when death happens, when death occurs, when a loved one dies, when a friend dies. Um, back in the day, we would make sweatshirts and t-shirts. RIP, rest in peace. That's something that we say when people transition on uh, from this life to the other because we want that person who has just transitioned to find the peace that they're looking for. We are are just praying and hoping that they are resting in eternal peace. But I don't know about you. I don't want to wait until my death to experience rest and peace. Amen? I'm not waiting until I die to experience true rest. I want to rest in life. Amen? Can someone put that in the chat for me? I will rest in life. I want to rest in life. Can somebody put hashtag R-I-L, rest in life? We changing up the acronyms. We don't have to wait to get to the great by and by to live in peace or to rest in peace. No, we can live in peace right here and right now. When, so when we say rest, When we say rest in the Lord, this is a common phrase that is used in the Bible. It's an expression that we hear over and over again, especially in the Psalms. Psalms 37, 7 says, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. And in this Psalm, it's not talking about a physical rest or that involves taking a break from an activity or relaxing or napping or sabbatical or even a vacation, which are all 
good. Amen. I am amen for all of those. I'm here for it. Sign me up for any one of those any day of the week. But this rest is different because have you noticed that when you do all those things, rest, relax, take vacations, have you ever noticed that even in those spaces, have you been in a place where you still you can't find the peace that you need, that you can't be present when you're on vacation or you can't be still when you have a day off or you feel guilty for like staying on the couch all day and just being still and being restful? Or do you feel guilty about having inactivity? So this is what I'm talking about. Uh, the rest that comes from God can't just be about the physical rest because even when we do rest, our minds are still racing. Some of of us are dealing with insomnia and you you even though you are in a rested position in your body your mind is going a thousand miles per hour there has to be more to this rest than just being restful amen what does it mean to rest in the lord i think that instead it refers to a spiritual rest it's a rest from confusion a rest from worry and stress, from useless human effort. And it's a break from all the internal and external mortal and spiritual enemies that we fight. This is the rest that I'm talking about. It's a rest that comes from God. It's a spiritual rest. The Hebrew word rest means to be at peace, to be still to be quiet or calm in a place of rest in the Lord. Some Bible translation says to be still in the Lord, be silent before the Lord, surrender yourselves to the Lord or, or be still in the presence of God. These versions convey that the essential idea is that we are to rest and be at peace. One must dwell in the presence of God to do that. You must be surrendered to God's lordship. If you haven't followed along with me already, I'm talking about resting in the Lord. Someone say resting in the Lord. Amen. I'm just going to believe that you said it. Um, would you believe me, people of God? Will you believe me if I were to tell you that even in the midst of a pandemic, that this kind of life is available to us? Would you believe me if I told you that? that there is a rest for the people of God? Would you believe me if I told you that even through life's ups and downs and all the trials and tribulations we go through, when we just go through life, life happens to everyone. Could you believe me when I tell you that there is a posture that we can take as people of God, the same posture that Jesus had when Jesus was in the boat in a storm. Do y'all remember that, that story where Jesus was asleep in a boat in the midst of a storm? I mean, Jesus was knocked out. He had a pillow. They had to come and wake him, like shake him like, God, we are about to die. Jesus was unbothered in the midst of the storm. Would you believe me, child of God, if I told you that that kind of posture spiritually is available to you? Well, our passage today it's going to shed light for us on how we can live this kind of life in the year of our Lord, 2022. Amen. This, this, the, the word of God is active and it's living. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. And it's still relevant. This ancient book is still relevant to our times and our days. So y'all ready to dive in with me? Let's see what this passage has to say to us. I'm back in Matthews 11. Matthew 11, 28, in the Amplified Version, it says, Come to me, all who are weary and heavily burdened by religious rituals that provide no peace, and I will give you rest, refreshing your souls with salvation. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, following me as my disciple, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest renewal, blessed quietness for your souls. I want to talk about two things. 
I want to talk about the two things that Jesus is offering to us in this passage and what it looks like, all right? Two things. Somebody say two things. All right, the first thing, first, first things first, even before I get to my two points, can we just uh, amplify who Jesus is reaching out to? Who is Jesus, this crowd right here? Who, who, who fits the, the job description? Who is the qualified candidate for this rest that Jesus is offering? Who is Jesus reaching out to? It says that Jesus is um, saying in verse 28, he's looking for the weary and the heavily burden, the weary and the heavily burden. If you are a candidate for Jesus's rest, if you would like to sign up for this program, if you have, if you, when your homegirls, your homeboys got something for the free or we got a hookup, how many want to sign up for this or participate in this study of how to find rest? Jesus is looking for those who are weary. Come on, raise your hand if you're weary. I'm tired of this pandemic. I'm tired. I'm done. I want to tap out. Time. I'm weary. How many people are heavily burdened? This is if this, if this is you, if you raise your hand, if you say yes in your heart, I have good news for you. Jesus has something for you. There is an invitation for you. And I like even too, Jesus is looking for somebody else. It says those um who are burdened by religious rituals that provide no peace. That kind of sounds like Jesus is looking for some church folks. Amen. Jesus is looking for the spiritual ones, the ones who are trying to find peace in all the things. We have all the accessories. We have the crystals, the rocks, the chakras. We have the stones. We got all the things. I'm looking for the spiritual people who are saging and doing all the things, the people who have been in church, the people who are fine, those who are heavily burdened by stuff, by things, by trying to find peace. Jesus is looking for you. Hey, Jesus is looking for you. Heavy burden, weary. This is what I like. I am a candidate. I am signing up for the program. What you got for me, Jesus? The first thing that Jesus is offering, and this is so good, Jesus is offering rest for souls. Come on, can you say that? Rest for souls. Jesus said two times, I will give you rest, refreshing your souls with salvation. And then another time, he said, I will, you will find rest, renewal, blessed quietness for your soul. Jesus over here handing out rest for souls, which is so countercultural because in our, you know, what we see in our society and what we see on Instagram and what we see on Twitter and what we see on Facebook is grind culture. This is, this is so opposite of what we've been brought up in in this Western society. We are in grind culture. We have formed, we have been formed and fashioned in the oppressive ways of capitalism. We over here on team no sleep. We on that can't stop, won't stop mentality. This is what we have been formed in. Do y'all remember back in 2020 where everyone made you feel so bad if you weren't starting a business? Like, if you're not using this pandemic, I don't know what you was doing. Like, I just want to sit down somewhere. Y'all remember that? So I, we don't want to continue to perpetuate this kind of, of thinking in this society. What Jesus is saying is so countercultural to what our society is saying. We have to lean into this soul rest. Come on, are we going to really go into this? This soul rest, this rest for souls. Because remember that we human beings are made up of three parts. We have a body, we have a soul, and we have a spirit. With our body, that's how we relate to the, to the world. This is how we interact with it. We live in a body. We have a soul, which we'll talk about, and then we have a spirit. This is what is awakened. Before you become a believer, your spirit is dead. But when you receive Jesus, your spirit comes alive. This is how we communicate with God. This is how we talk to God. God is a spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. This is why our spirit comes alive when we are saved. Amen. So what is this soul? What is a soul? Simply stated, the human soul is the part of a person that is not physical. 
It is the part of every human being that lasts eternity, eternally after the body experiences death. Amen. So the author George McDonald said, you don't have a soul. You are a soul. You have a body. Come on here, George. In other words, personhood is not based on having a body. A soul is required. A soul is basically our mind, our emotion, and our will. It is who we are as human beings. Amen. Everyone that you come across and encounter is a soul. Everyone has a soul. And in the Greek, the Greek word for soul, this is so interesting, it means breath. And you remember this because back in Genesis, God breathed into Adam, and Adam became a living soul. Our souls are what animate us. And it is so sacred to reconnect with the breath that God has given us. Learning, I'm learning, I'm learning from a lot of my friends about breath work and how sacred our breath is. Learning to appreciate the ruach, the breath of God that God has put into us. Learning how to take deep cleansing breath because it's the oxygen that purifies our body and rebuilds our cells and our muscles. Come on, there's something special about reconnecting to the breath of God. Amen. This is um, our soul. It's also um, the immaterial part of a human being that can respond to other people. Okay, that same Greek word for soul is psyche, from which we get the word psychology. Amen? The soul involves the mind and emotion, and it gives us the capacity to relate to other people and form bonds. So people with healthy souls are capable of forming meaningful relationships, while people with unhealthy souls find it more difficult. Amen. This is why God has blessed us with counselors and therapists and psychiatrists and psychological and psychiatrists to help us with our soul care. I'm going to say that one more time. This is why God gave us counselors and therapists and psychologists and psychiatrists to help us with soul care. So a lot of talk goes about around, and we talk a lot about self-care. Oh, we have to take time for self-care. Never in my whole life have I heard so much about self-care because we have grinded ourselves into a just a, obliteration. So now we are talking more and more about self-care, which I love. But I have a question for you, child of God. How is your soul care? Amen. How is your soul See, soul care is the attention given to healing a wounded soul or maintaining a healthy soul. Soul care is often linked to finding help to overcome temptations or fighting addictions or just to have peace with God. It is so important this year that we take time to deal with our soul. The old hymn said, it is well with my soul. How many people can say that? Can you say that it is well with your soul? Um, there, we, we spend so much on the outside. We spend so much on our outward body that we sometimes neglect to take care of our very souls, the seat of our emotion, the seat of our will, the place that really makes you a human being is your soul. So what does it look like to tend to your soul? I'm so glad you asked. Here are just a few tips that can help us in this new year to deal with our soul, to tend to our soul. Here's just a quick list. We can use prayer, use of scripture, do some deep soul searching, and even simplicity, to simplifying your life. Solitude and silence, spiritual friendships, and journaling. 
These are all excellent ways that you can start tending to you, tending to your souls, reflecting on yourself and really what's going on inside of you. Some other practices for caring for the soul are meditation, listening to music, making restitutions for wrongs done, decluttering one's life, and performing acts of kindness. I'm telling you, child of God, this is the year. If you missed it in 2020 when we had all that time to sit in lockdown, if you missed it, and if you missed it in 2021, guess what? We got another chance to do some self-reflective work and to deal with your soul. And this is so beautiful to me because we have a Savior. We have Jesus who wants to bring rest to the very core of you. Amen. God, Jesus wants to, to bring rest to the, to the very essence of who you are. See, we try to bring rest to our surroundings. We try to make everything right and try to do everything right aesthetically. And we want to just have the facade and have the post and have the, the IG picture and make sure that everything is going on. But this is not where Jesus wants to bring rest truly and deeply. We have a Savior that loves you so much that he wants to bring rest to the very core of who you are, that makes you who you are, the very core of your personality, the very thing that makes you human, this is where Jesus is going to bring peace. Amen. So what does this rest look like? What does it look like? What can we expect? Okay, Jesus, I would like to sign up for your rest plan. Um, what will it look like? Well, it's very interesting that in the verse, in verse 29, Jesus says, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, following me as my disciple, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest, renewal, blessed quietness for your souls. Jesus uses an analogy here, and he uses the analogy of a yoke. Yes, of all things that the Savior, creator of the universe, could have chosen to use of all the examples of all the things that he made. He was like, let me tell you what rest looks like. You want to know what it is? It looks like this. And he shows this people an imagery, an imagery of oxen with a yoke. The yoke is the wooden thing that links the two oxen together. Now, this was very a common illustration to the audience that he was speaking to in ancient Palestine. They would have been like, oh, yes, of course, an oxen. Got it, Jesus. Got it. Tony Evans said, uh, once you come to Jesus, he invites you to hook up with him as a disciple. Yoke, a yoke is a wooden bar harnessed to the necks of a pair of oxen. Now listen to this. To train the younger oxen, farmers would yoke them to older, experienced oxen. It provided maturation and development. Can you see what Jesus is offering here? What does rest look like? It wasn't what you would have expected. You probably thought like laying on pillowy cushions of, of harps and things like that. Jesus is like, no, I, I got one better for you. I got, I got better than that. Jesus actually wants to partner with you to shoulder the load that you're carrying. Ooh, what a savior. Jesus wants to partner with you. Jesus like, you know what, I, don't, I, I got one better for you. I'm not just going to like zap it and make it better. I'm going to get down in the dirt with you and yoke up with you, and I'm going to carry the weight of the load that you have been trying to carry by yourself. Hallelujah. Isn't what a wonderful God we serve. Jesus is saying, I want to get down in the dirt. I want to get down with you. I'm going to help you shoulder this load. Now, in a modern analogy, you know, it's kind of hard to translate what would that mean in our cities, in our modern technology. What, what could that look 
like for us to yoke up? The closest thing that I can think of, and y'all could probably think of better analogies, but you know, whenever you had to move, everybody loves to move, right? When you're moving and you need to carry a couch, you need to pick up a couch, and you're like struggling trying to drag it by yourself. That not it the best thing in the world when a friend comes along and picks up the other end of the couch? What does that do? When you were first struggling, when the friend picks up the other side of the couch, it makes the couch light. It wasn't so heavy. When you were doing it by yourself, it was dang near impossible. You couldn't do it. You was bumping into stuff. You were ruining the furniture. That's how a lot of our lives are. We're ruining everything around us, trying to carry this load. And Jesus was like, I got you. Let me, let, me, let me join with you. Let me partner with you. And when I get in this thing, when I lift it, I'll make it light. I'll make it easy. Hallelujah. Can you believe the kind of God that we have? That, can you believe this is the, what, the rest that God is offering us? Jesus is saying, I want to do for you like the oxen does for the one that is in need. I'm going to come yoke up with you, partner with you, and make it light. Somebody say, hallelujah. That is good news. That, my friend was the definition of what Jesus wants to do in your souls. Whatever you're going through right now, whatever you're struggling with, whatever seems overwhelming and too hard to bear, Jesus is saying, let me come in and let me partner with you. Let me bring up the other side and make it easy and light for you. Let me, let me take the brunt of it. I'll shoulder it and we'll do this together. This is what it means to be a disciple. Let's do it together. I love this about Jesus. So this is my question. This is my question for us today. Will you take Jesus up on his invitation? I I love in the verse of the way this verse starts off. It starts off with come to me, comma. This is how this whole verse starts off in verse 28. The only thing you have to do to take up this invitation for Jesus is just come. (laughs) Just come to him. There's no admission fee. There's not like an application to fill out. There's not a bunch of runaround you need to do. You don't need to sell things. Jesus is simply saying to you, if you want to experience rest for your souls, that's what I'm providing. All you have to do is just come to me. Don't run to IG, don't run to your friends, don't run to a book, don't run to TV, don't run to Netflix or movies or keep yourself busy. Hey, come to me. I I have everything you need. I am your bread, water, light, whatever you need, Jesus is. Come to me. This is what Jesus says. And Jesus says, you will have rest for your souls. So is it possible to find rest in the middle of your storm? Is it possible for us to find rest in the beginning of 2022 that's looking oh so familiar? Is it possible, saints of God, for us to find rest in the middle of the storm like Jesus did? Jesus modeled for us what it looks like to be unbothered when life is tossing and turning This is what Jesus wants to do on the inside of us when we are going through storms. Check it out. As believers, we are not granted immunity from life storms, but we have a choice on how we will react to the storms of life. Our natural tendency might be to run around frantically looking for help, been there, trying to save ourselves from trouble, We can either respond with anxiety or rest in the Lord's presence. We can either waste our time worrying or trust in the Lord to take care of us. Jesus said, come to me. All you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle in heart. 
Jesus is not yelling at you. Jesus is not saying, why are you a failure? Jesus is not demanding more of you. Jesus is not trying to make you prove yourself to him. Jesus is humble and gentle at heart. And the guarantee is that you will find rest for your souls. Jesus says, my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden that I give you is light. So if Christianity is hard, you're doing it wrong. If religion is a burden, then we're doing it wrong. There's no striving in Jesus. All you have to do is come. Amen. So we have an invitation before us. We are going to rest in life. Amen. How many want to rest in life? I am determined, saints of God, to rest in life. Well, next week, we're going to pick up with part two, and we're going to learn important lessons from a group of people who miss their invitation from God to enter into rest. So we definitely do not want to be in that number. Amen. Let's just close in a word of prayer. I pray that God has spoken to you in this time um, that we're going through right now and that you have been um, inspired to have hope that God really loves you and that Jesus wants to be in this with you. And Jesus will supply something for you that nothing in this world can do. No one else can satisfy but Jesus. So let's pray. God, we thank you. Thank you for your word. Jesus, we adore you. We worship you. We love you. We reverence you. What kind of God is this that will supply people, ordinary people, with such a promise of rest? So God, we respond to your invitation. We say that we are RSVPing. We are saying we want to sign up. Where is the sign up sheet? We are here for your rest initiative. We want to be a part of it. God, we come to you weary. We come to you heavy burden. We come to you stressed out. We come to you distraught. God, we are tired. So God, this is who you're looking for. We come to you heavy burden. And you said in return that you would shoulder these burdens with us. And you will make them light. And you'll give us rest for our souls. God, let us experience this rest. Lord, let us experience what it's like to have care for our souls, the deepest part of us. Not just the superficial, but you're going way down into the deep, the part of us that nobody sees. That's the work that you're doing inside of us. So, God, we say yes to it. We surrender to it. God, we say that um, our lives are yours and we are determined to trust you in the, midst of this, in the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of 2022. We don't know what's ahead of us, but we are determined to trust you. And no matter what goes on, God, we will find rest for our souls. Lord, we uh, give us the tools and the discipline and the spiritual practices that we need to tend to our souls. Lord, I just want to pray for those who are listening and do not know you yet. If you are listening and this is the first time that you are hearing that Jesus provides so many benefits for your souls, we want to invite you to make Jesus Lord of your life. And if you are watching this and you have not made that decision, this is your day. Can you just make a public declaration, declaration wherever you are and say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I want to follow you all the days of my life. I accept your invitation of rest and I want to make you the Lord of my life. God, I thank you for whoever is listening. If they've said that prayer, that this is the start of their journey, that you will continue to do a work in their lives. We thank you for the way Christian Center continue to bless us as we lean into rest, as we lean into refreshing, as we lean into wellness. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, saints. I really hope that this word resonates with you, and I really hope that you will take it throughout your week. Um, we have a, uh, next week, we'll talk more about what it means to lean into the rest of God.